Shall we do the confessions together? I believe in the Almighty God, our Father and Creator. I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, God and my Savior. He was conceived of the Holy Spirit and born of a virgin. He suffered, died and rose again. He ascended into heaven. He shall soon come again. I believe in God the Holy Spirit, who is worshipped and my guide. I believe in holy fellowship, faithful giving, and service to God in this church. I believe the Holy Bible is the perfect word of God. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. And I can do what it says I can do. Today, as I learn the word of God, here in my spiritual family, I'm blessed, healed, and anointed for a holy and victorious living. I will never again be the same. In Jesus' name, amen. The Lord bless us. Please be seated. We're going to continue to learn from the Holy Scriptures. This month we are studying on passion, the character of Christ our Lord. The Holy Bible teaches us that our God is a holy God. Holiness is God's nature. Purity, another word of holiness is purity. Our God is a God of purity. Our God is not impure, he is pure. Holiness is purity. And uh, God's nature is what God wants us to have. God wants us to be like him and therefore God wants us to be pure. Many times when we see the requirement for purity in the Bible, as in the Bible demanding us to be pure, and sometimes we wonder, why, why is it that God doesn't allow us to steal or commit adultery or... Um, why is it that God doesn't allow us uh, to do those things and calls it wrong? Um, that's because God's nature is like that. God doesn't um, cheat, steal, uh, destroy. And therefore, God says, you're my children, you should not do that. Because you should be like me, you know. So that is the holiness concept in the Bible. To be like Jesus. And that's why he wants us to be holy. Because God is holy and we, his children, should be holy. So that's the fundamental thought process in the Holy Scripture. But one of the big problems we all develop is, in an attitude of becoming pure, we begin to shrink and separate ourselves and we begin to walk away from building ourselves. God wants us to build ourselves. Uh, it is important to be pure and holy, but you should build yourself in the grace of God in your family life. You know, build yourself uh, in your worship. Build yourself in opportunities that God creates for you. Uh, you're a sportsman. Build yourself as the top in the nation. You have good administrative skills. Get into civil services. Build yourself as a good leader. Uh, Christians somehow run away from politics. Politics is somehow, that's because, you know, in, in Christian faith, people learn from their pastors and pastors usually avoid politics. And politics is a bad word in pastor's mouth because God has called us to serve and not to really rule, you know. And, but politics is about ruling. It's about uh, a lot of those kind of things and, and somehow churches are, are never designed to produce politicians. And uh, I, I actually, to talk this topic, I was repenting myself saying, God, how much I joke against politicians. I have to stop that. But God's children need to start considering politics as career. Uh, and I'm talking about good politics. See, I've already lost you, right? This is the problem with church. The minute you talk anything outside mainline, uh, people get uh, distracted. But the truth is, God's children must build themselves. Business, you're a businessman, you must be the top of the line. You know, uh, I, I remember going to a restaurant to pray. He, that man told me, Pastor, I'm putting a small uh, restaurant. And then he later told me, it's not even a restaurant, it's a food joint. Uh, I don't have money to open a restaurant. Uh, Some place in the city, uh, he has put a small uh, shed like a thing and that's not his uh, somebody's offered it to him he's he knows to cook he said I'm going to start that and I want you to come and pray it's too small 
there is no place to stand inside. Only the uh, chef can stand inside. Customers have to stand out. Do you mind standing on the roadside and praying? I said, I don't mind all that. So I went there and uh, I was really, really amazed to see uh, this kind of a setup. He had got some corporation license to do that uh, in that hot spot on the roadside. So I said, okay, we are going to pray. And he said, Pastor, I'm so ashamed that you have to pray here, standing on the roadside and all the traffic. I don't have the money to do a good infrastructure. So I heard all those, you know, all those very humble expressions. And, and then I told him, I'll pray on one condition. And he, he thought because of the, you know, it was in the day. He thought because of the sunlight and things, I'm asking for an umbrella. I just want a shade. And he said, uh, Pastor, I'll hold a newspaper over you. I said, no, I never asked for a newspaper. Listen, let me finish. Okay, what do you want? I said, I want you to agree with me. I'm going to pray that in this kind of food, you will be the number one in the city and that you'll open many branches. You know, he stared at me like I was speaking in Sanskrit or Swahili or speaking in tongues. Then I repeated myself. He said, Pastor, I'm hoping I'll do enough business to pay off the loans that I have taken just to do this. I said, I can't pray in such a condition. I'll not pray because my God is a big God. He moves mountains. I cannot pray to a big God for small things. It's an insult. My God moves, I told this brother, my God moves mountains and you're asking him to move marbles? His eyes welled up with tears and he said, whatever you want to pray, you pray. I said, no, we have to agree on this. I'm telling you, I, I took a few minutes at that, in that place to convince this man first. He may be listening today, God bless you. He moved out of Bangalore. He built his own stuff, moved out of Bangalore. Uh, God's blessed him so much. He opened his own resort, you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It took him some time, but then he finally agreed with me. Then I prayed for him. Sometimes I pray for sick people. I tell them, do you believe you are going to get up? I don't know. Then you'll be there. <laughs> we'll pray after you believe. I don't tell them you'll be there. I... I think in my mind, wait, first let's get your faith up. You know, when you go to God, there are some qualifiers. Qualifiers. You, you got some basics going correct first. Go to God with confidence. The other day, one family brought one wonderful young lady saying, you know, India, parents want their children to be married. Children want their parents to stay married. All this kind of situation. So, uh, I... <laughs> The parents went on to say she's so old and she's done that, she's excellent, it's time. You know, we want someone from God for her. I listened to everything. I said, okay, we're going to pray. Then I looked at her and said, do you want to get married? I don't know. <laughs> I said, whenever you say yes, come back. Because when I pray, God will provide, you will reject. Then that fellow also will come to me. I don't know why all are rejecting me. I can't handle this confusion. First, you make up your mind. Then parents saying, actually we brought her so you can talk to her, pray for her, so she will make up her mind. I said, no, I am already married. You need to, <laughs> I was joking, of course, they knew that. You need to find somebody who can talk to her and change her mind. We'll pray for that guy. Then they all agreed and we prayed. And the other day they told me that she changed her mind because somebody fitting spoke to her. You see, we have to learn to grow in faith. Faith is not so that you will somehow get by. The other day I was, uh, you know, every day I uh, take time to try to take time to read the scripture from the calendar and meditate on it, our church calendar. So the other day I was reading that scripture. You will pass through fire, it will not burn you. You will pass through water, it won't drown you. And something slapped me tight, as in I felt like that. No one slapped me. I, I felt a big shake up. And it was this. You will pass through fire. I didn't like that scripture. 
I said, God, this ain't good. <laughs> I am believing you so that I don't have to pass through fire. I can avoid fire. No, you will pass through fire. But it will not burn you. Because I will be with you. A lot of times, a lot of times, our purity is built on our faith. But our faith is about avoiding problems. Now that's not bad. Yes, it's good to avoid problems. But when you have to go through problems, don't let your faith make you a tortoise where you draw into the shell. But stay as a kid of the Lion of Judah. Stay there as a child of God and build yourself in faith. Build yourself in holiness. Build yourself in your... Maybe some of you need to be in government. This church is filled with young people. I'm telling you guys, have a big vision for your life from God. Don't think small. But uh, pastor, only small things. That is okay. Small things will happen. But believe God for big things. Trust God for big things. God can bless you right in your neighborhood. Amen. You don't have to travel across the sea. Right where you are, God can lift you up and build your life and prosper you and give you success. Build yourself on your most holy faith. Hallelujah. One of the big mistakes the Pentecostal movement made in our country is this. They believed more in separation than in leadership. And that is actually against the scriptural teaching. They believed in separation. Now that you're a child of God, separate yourself. No. Yes, you separate yourself. There's no doubt about that. You separate yourself from sin, but you lead the sinners to righteousness. Amen. Don't separate yourself from sinners. Lead sinners. Be in leadership. God has called you to be in leadership. God wants us to be people who are in leadership. What we make of ourselves. Okay. Pastor, from which scripture are you preaching? Jude, let's read verse number 20. But beloved. Uh huh. Ah. Pure faith is about building yourself. Pure faith is about building yourself. Angel will come and build me. God will build me. All that is correct. Miracles will build me. But God is saying you are responsible in your holy faith to build yourself. I'm going to ask you a question. This month of March, what part of your life are you going to build? In your faith, which part of your life are you choosing to? Where are you going to put your focus on building? It is Unless you focus on building, you can't. It is important. God is saying, build yourself. A lot of times we build ourselves. We construct ourselves on confusions. We allow confusions to disturb our mind. We build ourselves on fear. I'm afraid of that, so I'm going to build something else. No, build yourself on faith. Don't build on anxieties. Build on faith. Don't build on negativity and gossip. Build on faith. And the Bible says when you build on faith, you got to pray in the spirit. Building in purity and praying in the spirit go together. Why pray in the spirit? Because when you pray in the spirit, it is praying prophetically. Prophetic prayers are very powerful. And sometimes they are different from what you plan in your mind. And allowing the Holy Spirit to lead your prayer is very important. Sometimes when you pray, God will take your prayer in a different direction. Allow the Holy Spirit to lead the prayer. Because you are coming out a winner in the name of Jesus. You have to build yourself in prophetic prayer. Hallelujah. Amen. What you give of yourself to God. See, many times when we talk of giving, one of the big mistakes Christians have made is that they think of giving means it's money. Sometimes they think of giving time to God. What you do with your life, what you make of yourself is your gift back to God. Amen. Yes, giving your time to God is important. Giving your abilities to God is important. Giving your money is a commandment of the Bible. You should give financially. But that's, that's not all of giving. There's more to giving. 
What I make of my life is my gift back to God. So if I build myself in purity, then I'm making myself qualified as something that God can receive. So which means if I'm imperfect, God won't receive me? Answer is, listen, no matter how much you and I build ourselves, we're never going to be perfect. We're never going to be so good that God will look at it and say, you're so nice, I can't reject you. No, the Bible already clarifies that. That all our good works are yet unholy and filthy before him. So acceptance by God comes purely by God's grace. However, my respect for God, my worship for God should make me holy and pure as a gift back to God. Amen. Live in that faith. Live in that confidence. Build yourself in faith. Let's say that together. Build yourself. And what faith? Holy faith. Holy faith. Holy faith. Purity is the spring leader champion of Christian life. Without purity, your Christian life is only religious life. It's not a spiritual life. Purity is very important. Very, very important. Many people, they say, if you preach purity, your church won't grow. They say like that. Because people don't like to hear about purity. But in my life, it's the opposite. I preach holiness, I preach purity, more people are coming to Christ. Yeah, because people like godliness in their life. Yeah, people like to be pure. And people are actually unhappy that there is impurity in their life. They want to change. That's the reality. You, you look at uh, drug addicts. You know, they, they try to hide it, not only because of police. Because they don't, most of them don't flaunt it because they prefer to change. They secretly like to change. I can't tell his name, but one, one you know, famous guy the other day, uh, some time back, met with me. And uh, uh, I think his, he, was, he was married for the fourth time. And then his wife died and it was a big scandal and whatever, whatever. Somehow I met with this guy and uh, I, don't, I don't know how. Somehow the conversation went to marriage. And, uh, and he says this to me. He speaks fine English. He says this to me. Uh, I'm not as fortunate as you guys are to be married to the same person for a lifetime. Something like that, he said. I understood what he said, but I can't repeat his English. <laughs> I giggled inside because I could see that he had respect for people who were not like him. And that's the reality. A lot of genuine people respect those who are more clean than them, more pure than them, more um, honest than them. Anybody with good sense like to see something better than what they have and want that in their life. You know, this is a very, very human condition. People respect, I mean, there, there are bad people that don't respect good things and that's not our reference anyway. So you and I must build ourselves in purity, in the purity of God's grace and God's glory and God's goodness. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 This is so important. You know, fellows who have only one girlfriend and are committed to marrying that girlfriend, many of them are confused. How come... My friend has got two, three girlfriends. But after some time, you will be shocked to find out if that fellow is genuine. He'll tell you at how he is struggling to change. He wants to be honest to one person. He wants to be sincere to one person. This whole thinking that ugly people, uh, I'm talking about personality. Ugly people means not physical looks. Ugly personalities, you know, dirty personalities are not happy about themselves. Many of these ugly personalities or what we call sinful personalities, according to medical research, are more depressed and are prone to suicide. Yes, especially in the woke culture, you know, in the woke culture of liberalism, they are more depressed and they are more prone to suicide because they are unhappy with their life. <laughs> It's very interesting, no? When they have all this public march, how they look happy and they draw happy faces. But deep inside, medical stats show that they are more prone to suicide and more negative and have more mental temperament problems and more tantrums. These are medical facts. 
you don't want to build your life on confusion you want to build your life in purity hallelujah build your life in holiness amen <laughs> now pastor when i build my life on holiness you know the, the how do i explain it to my friends how how do i explain <laughs> let's see what jesus said Matthew chapter 7 verse 6 don't give i'm not calling your friends dogs but there is something here that we must understand do not give what is sacred do not throw your if you do they may trample them under their feet and turn and tear you to god our master is saying one simple thing listen man when you are pure and holy don't share that holiness don't share that purity with the people around you in the world because they don't understand you dogs means friends <laughs> dogs are the most friendly you agree with that please yeah come on i'm talking about your pet dog not street dog pet dogs are very friendly but don't bring them to church okay The other day I got an email saying, "Can I bring my dog?" No, no, no. Maybe your dog can leave you at the gate, but the dog should go back. <laughs> One lady came to me for prayer. If you are here, forgive me. With her husband, and I, I prayed for both. Not on a Sunday, on a weekday. I prayed for both of them. And before I could pray for both of them, I said, "Okay, so can I pray for both of you?" And she said, "For three of us." you know when couples tell me that the three of us i thought maybe she's carrying or something and i said uh, what do you mean and she opened her bag one dog was inside the bag <laughs> a small puppy i love dogs i'm a dog lover i love dogs oh it was so cute and i told her listen don't bring dogs why i said because we don't give membership to dogs <laughs> they don't pay tithes they don't sing songs they don't they are not good volunteers so i love dogs i love dogs any house i go to where dogs are there dogs jump. my wife always tells me this the dogs jump on me they lick me they love me yesterday i was there for a housewarming oh man two dogs in that house they were they were they thought new person but the dogs just fell in love i have, I, have, i love dogs i have no problem with dogs but don't bring them to church <laughs> don't even try because a place of worship has got its sense of devotion you know so anyway <coughs> dogs represent uh, loving people dogs represent loyal people dogs represent people that uh, are there with you you know and then swine pig that's profit you got a pig okay people who understand chicken as profit right chicken means you sell it some day you get money pig is the same so god is saying loyal people they may be loyal they may be friends and they may be profitable in your life they may be good resources but don't take your holiness and give it to them two things will happen number one they will treat it as ah what is there you don't drink as if it's something big so what even modi ji doesn't drink gandhi ji didn't drink what you think you are holy if you don't drink you know they will trample your holiness you will feel like oh yeah if i drink what is there then all those scriptures will come back to your mind a little wine is good jesus turned water into wine <laughs> when you quote that scripture i know what is your fellowship dogs and swine <laughs> second thing the lord said is very important they will not only trample your value system as if it is useless but they will attack you put that scripture again please the same dog and swine will turn and tear you to pieces not just your gifts and talents they'll start attacking you god is saying listen don't try to thank you don't try to show your holiness to people show the results of your holiness to people show your success to people show your victory to people oh go ahead give god a mighty hand don't show your values show the results nobody can trample your results show your results to people don't preach your values but let people respect the results you produce 
So don't be in a hurry to convince your friends and get their validation. Don't wait for them to appreciate you. <laughs> My school days, early college days, I remember, you know, they used to mock me. When I used to enter the class, they'll say, not always, sometimes. My friend would stand up and say, Good morning, Gandhi. <laughs> they used to mock me because I'm the only one who will go to the counter and buy bonda. All of them will buy cigarettes. Only me, bonda, tea, coffee. Or budgie, tea, coffee. And they'll be like, Hey, Johnson's come. They'll all keep the cigarettes at the back. Go fast, man. Our cigarette is getting over. <laughs> they used to mock me, laugh at me, but when exam time came, John, pray for me, okay? <laughs> John, hey, nan hesar hell bida pa, nan prayer le. I graduated from Gandhiji, Nelson Mandela, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I went through different stages <laughs> because I don't drink, I don't smoke, I'm the only one without girlfriends. They all have imaginary or real, whatever. <laughs> I tell you, we must understand, don't try to, don't try to push your holiness with others. Don't wait for them to validate and appreciate you. Mostly they laugh at you. You show them results. You show them what God is able to do through your life. Hallelujah. Before you communicate with anybody, anything spiritual, pray for them. Let God give you the inspiration. Only then you should do it. Don't get into arguments trying to prove what is right. Who, no, don't do all those things. Your purity is between you and God Almighty. Hallelujah. Amen. This is something very, very important. Sometimes we destroy our holiness and purity through the way we relate with others. And, and now this is the wrong thinking. Many people think during Lent days, if I eat non-veg, I'll become unholy. If I uh, do that, um, well, now there are some mannerisms that you want to honor because it's a part of good tradition. But it's not scriptural, it's just a part of good tradition. And good tradition, every family has its own values, so you can honor those values. But the Lord Jesus said something very interesting about purity. Let's read Matthew chapter 15 verse 18 and 19. But the things that come out of a person's mouth come from the heart and these defile them. For out of the heart comes evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false testimony. The list goes on. So many things, we think what goes into us spoils us. Uh-uh. Well, that may do its work. But things that come out of us, it defiles us. It makes us impure. And if you notice that scripture, can we read it one more time, please? But the things that come out of a person's mouth come from the heart. Mouth and heart are connected, okay? We'll get to that. And these defile the person. For out of the heart comes evil thoughts. Let's read it together. Murder, adultery, theft. Now, did you notice one common thing in all this? You can't do it alone. All these sins, thank you. All these impurities require a friendship. In other words, defilement begins in us, but requires right relationship to make it happen. You can't rob unless there is somebody to rob. You can't speak gossip unless there is somebody about whom you want to speak. So God is saying, in your relationships, sin becomes mature. Sin becomes real. Sin becomes born. Until then, it's just conceived. So, this is how I want to explain it. Thoughts are what you talk to yourself. Words are what you talk to others. 
Thoughts are what you say to yourself. Words are what you talk to others. And defilement, impurity can happen at both levels. And Jesus, our Lord, is connecting mouth with the heart. <coughs> God made us. Didn't he know that mouth is connected to the mind? No, the Lord is saying something more important. <coughs> the Lord is saying, logics is not where you build your sin. Emotions are where you build your sin. Mind is about logics. Heart is about feelings. And your mouth is connected to your feelings. Your words become prophetic when you feel them. Don't defile yourself <coughs> by confusing your feelings. That's why it's important to have holy feelings. <laughs> your feelings is what inspires you, motivates you. Guard your feelings. Because when you guard those, then you guard your body, your mind, and your spirit. Defilement can happen at all the three levels. You want to keep your body as an instrument of righteousness, Romans chapter 6. You want your body to be a member that practices holiness. You want your mind and your heart, your feelings and your emotions to be holy by the grace of God. And your spirit remains uncontaminated by the grace of God. Hallelujah. The Lord Jesus went on to explain it through a beautiful uh, illustration. The Lord said, Sunday morning when you come to worship me, before I say that, keep your hand on your chest. You know which side your chest is, right? Keep your hand on your heart. You brought your heart? You brought your hand? Connect. And say this, my heart is God's house, not hotel. Thank you. Many people conduct their heart as God's hotel. Sunday morning, come Lord. Sunday afternoon, check out Lord. <laughs> Your heart is God's home. Many of you were thinking of somebody else when you clapped. Think of yourself. Your heart is God's home. Not God's five-star hotel, anointed hotel, Pentecostal hotel. Some people, when they get anointed, they do like that. Some others do like that. Some clap. Whatever gesture you do, be God's dwelling place. Not visiting place. Amen. Many years ago, I went to one, one printing shop and what shocked me is in that house, I went at about 11 in the night and the, and the wife has come with a pillow to the office. A lady came with, I didn't know she was the wife of the guy I was talking to. She's come with a pillow to the office. She's also working in that office. Come for a pillow. I giggled. I thought it's for the back or something. And she left it on this guy with whom we were talking. One more brother from our church was there. We were talking to this guy about designing on Cunningham Road. We're designing a brochure for the church. And she leaves this pillow on his counter saying, here's your pillow. I thought he's going to keep it at the back or something. But I noticed that he was a little disturbed. And my friend was giggling. My friend knows him. Knows both of them. He used to work in that place. Then I asked what happened. I said, Pastor, <laughs> he hasn't gone home for two, three days. He's working, 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 sleeping in the office itself. So tonight she's come off. She's brought one pillow and come off to the office saying, okay, I'll also be here only. Many people, Jesus is coming with pillow on Sunday, because that's the only time he gets to meet you. You don't be his hotel. You don't be his walking park. You be his dwelling place. Don't forget this, very important. And God dwells in purity. God dwells in 
purity. So the Lord Jesus gave a beautiful story. He said, Sunday morning when you come to worship me, suddenly if you remember you have done something wrong against somebody else. Jesus said, keep your offering there. Keep your worship there. Go to that person with whom you've got a problem. Reconcile. And then come back and worship me. Why? Because I'm a holy God. I accept only holy worship. I don't accept impure worship. Oh, pa. You are difficult, no? Now you don't get up now. You listen. God is saying, I'm a holy God. When you worship me, have purity in your heart. God's nature is holiness. God's character is holiness. If you light fire, if you light fire, the other day we were talking about fire, someone did like this, lighting fire. I knew what habit he is from. I do this because I have done only matches. When you light fire, fire is hot and fire brings some amount of light. I want dark fire. It's not the nature of fire. I want cold fire. Nobody lights a candle and keeps in the fridge so that after half an hour, fire can be cold. Don't try these things. <laughs> fire has a nature. You can go and light it in Arctic, Antarctic, on Pluto. It will still be warm because fire is warm. I'm talking about candle fire. Now in your great PhD physics, don't think about the uh, electronic fire that you create on the screen. That looks like some Christians, cold, frozen, chosen. No, I'm talking about real fire. Real, real flame. It's warm. It's hot. It gives you some light. If you keep a candle in the house in the middle of the night, everything is dark, you keep a candle and it's burning. Do you need a torch to check where it is? No. Candle itself gives light. Because it's the nature of fire to give light. Hello, yes or no? God is a holy God. His nature is holiness. His character is holiness. Nobody says, I receive Jesus. I want to take one more puff. No. <laughs> no, nobody says, I got Jesus, I feel like cheating. No. When Christ comes into you, you begin to give up sinfulness. Nobody has to teach you. It's the nature of Christ. Oh, give God a big hand. Come on, church. I'm going to tell you one more story. I'm going to tell you one more story and then I'm going to pray with you. You all enjoyed today's message. Was it nice learning about purity? Hey, thank you. I love you. Yeah, because I was afraid that this is a little hard topic, boring topic. Nobody will like it and all I was thinking. But I knew you guys like to hear God's word. I'm talking about how Christ comes in our lives and how it changes us. Okay, so don't get offended, but I'm going to tell you one true story. I was sitting in the front row one Sunday. And somebody came and sat in the second row. And I'm going to say the story in which you were involved. I was telling my wife. So we were sitting together. During worship, I was going to come up and preach after a few minutes. And one lady came and sat behind us. And I don't know how, but somehow I noticed her. It was vulgar. Yeah. I mean, she was not covered well. That's, that's not how you come to church. Definitely. I mean, at least, at least not in Bangalore. So... I mean, however you come, it's okay. It's between you and God. But, but you know, just, just the social aspect of it. So, my wife also, I don't know how she also saw that. Wives always see. <laughs> Not only that, but what husband sees. And my wife nudged me. And if I this happened many years ago, so I don't remember exactly what happened, but I think what happened was between us, we were talking with our eyes as to 
got to tell her. I thought to myself, no, this is God's church. Let the Lord speak. I'm not going to speak anything. And even during the message, I decided not to talk on, on that topic. Because I, I don't want to be inspired by a situation. I want to be inspired by the Holy Spirit. Whatever I speak from the stage, I, I like to do it if the Lord talks to me, not, not because of some situation. So I kept quiet. My wife decided to tell her. As a responsible pastor's wife, she turned to tell her. And the Holy Spirit, my wife heard from the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And the Lord spoke to her saying, don't talk. Can you believe this? The Lord spoke to my wife. Don't talk. So she didn't talk. On the way back home, she told me, my wife said to me, Pastor Cynthia says, the Lord spoke to me not to talk. So I kept quiet. You tell. I said, no. <laughs> I won't tell. Why should I tell? Few months later, she kept, that lady kept coming to church. Few months, she got baptized. Few months later, she speaks to my wife. And then we get to know her husband is so against her coming to church, but he drops her every Sunday to church. And she's not a Christian. And she started coming to church and she got baptized. And at some point she realized this is not how people dress up in this church. So she began to change. She told my wife, None of you told me, but, but I kind of realized and I changed my outfits. And my wife says to me, this is what happens when the Lord really deals with people. I said, correct. If we deal, then God can't. <laughs> I have never seen anybody saying, I'm taking off everything. Christ came in my life. No, <laughs> no. You, 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 you. I know, all the men have to look very innocent, but you see, <laughs> I'm driving a pointer. Purity is actually the result of a good relationship between you and Christ Jesus. Purity is the result. Sister, you can cover yourself from head to toe, but if your heart is not pure, what is the use of your white and white? Same applies to brothers also. Clean shave, full white and white. <laughs> garments and other garments, all white, shining bright white. But if your heart is full of anger, jealousy, comparison, irritation, what are you useful for except to be buried? <laughs> that is called coffin class. Your heart, God is looking at our heart and says, keep your heart pure because out of it comes the issues of life. Wow. Okay, let's close. Let's close. One scripture and we close. First John chapter 1 verse 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. God's forgiveness always works with purification. Each time he forgives you, he gives you greater grace to overcome next time. So never be ashamed of going back to God and confessing your sin. Even if you're confessing the same sin for the 10,000th time, you go ahead and do it, brother. Each time, sister, God is giving you new grace to overcome because his forgiveness comes with his cleansing his purifying I want to tell you that habit that you want to change that wrong thing in your life that is you're struggling with one day you're going to wave the banner of victory because God is your strength God is your victory you are called into holiness by the power of God no weapon formed against you will ever prosper maybe it's short temper maybe it's adultery maybe I don't know what it is but there is victory in the blood of Jesus. Go ahead, give the Lord a mighty hand. There is victory in the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Close your eyes, let's pray. Heavenly Father, you spoke to us today. 
It's not the things that are external, but it's also the things that are internal. Help us, Father, that we will learn to redefine purity, not according to traditional values, but according to scriptural values. You are a holy God and you want us to be holy. And we pray that our character, our conversation will be holy. And that we will not look for our holiness, our purity, to be appreciated by people around us. But we'll just continue to be holy and let the results speak for themselves. I pray for everyone here, Father, because you love each one of us, that your cleansing blood and the power of your forgiveness flows abundantly in our lives. Sunday after Sunday, as we are studying about Jesus, Lord, your nature, help us to be more Christ-like from our hearts. To you be all the glory and honor in Jesus' holy and mighty name we pray. And the people said, Amen. 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 Shall we sing a song before we pray and close? This is a song which is about 200, 250 years old. It's an old song. Okay? <clears throat> but we'll sing it. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's cross and sinners plunge beneath that blood lose all their guilty stains lose all their guilty stains lose all their guilty stains and sinners plunge beneath that blood lose all their guilty stains the dying thief rejoice to see that fountain in his day and there have I though I less he washed all my sins away washed all my sins away washed all my sins away and there have I though I less he washed all my sins away I do believe I will believe that Jesus died for me that on the cross he shed his blood from sin to set me free from sin to set me free from sin to set me free that on the cross he shed his blood from sin to set me free your dying lamb thy precious blood shall never lose its power till all the ransom church of god be saved to sin no more be saved to sin no more be saved to sin no in all the ransom church of God come on everybody let's clap my hands let's do it ever since by faith I saw the stream thy flowing wounds supply redeeming love has been my theme and shall be till I die and shall be till I die and shall be till I die redeeming love has been my theme and shall be till I die I do believe I will believe that Jesus died for me 
that on the cross he shed his blood from sin to set me free from sin to set me free from sin to set me free that on the cross he shed his blood from sin to set me go ahead church give the lord a mighty hand take a few minutes praise him the power of the blood of jesus the power of the cross of calvary the power of his cleansing holy spirit touch every life transform every life hallelujah 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 come on take a few minutes to praise him take a few minutes to shout out his praises Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for this beautiful Sunday morning. Thank you, Father, for your holy presence here in this place. Thank you, Father, for teaching us through your holy word. And Lord, we all desire to be like you, O oh God, Father. And Lord, we thank you, O oh God, for as we learn today, holiness is the result of a deeper relationship with you. So this week, help us to get deeper in a relationship with you, O oh God, Father. And Lord, we know that, Lord, we will walk in your purity, in your holiness, and we will bring glory unto your name, O oh God, Father. As a church, we pray for everyone who has come here for the very first time. We pray that, Lord, your hand of blessing will be on their life, O God, Father. Lord, let your healing, deliverance, and goodness be on their life, O Lord. We also pray for those who are celebrating their birthdays or their wedding anniversaries this week. We pray for your favor upon them and upon the years ahead. We pray for those who are traveling this week that your journey mercy shall go with them, O God, Lord. We also pray over the tithes and the offerings, O God, Lord, that, O God, Lord, even as your children, O God, Lord, uh, give unto your kingdom, that, Lord, their gifts and their fruits will multiply, O God, by your grace, O God, Father, Lord. Thank you once again for your blessing over our lives. Send us back with your blessings. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Now may the goodness, may the love of us, may the love of our Jesus Christ, the, the, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of our Heavenly Father, the sweet and abiding fellowship of the Holy Spirit, may it rest and abide with each one of us, now and forevermore. And everybody said, Amen, Amen, Amen. God bless you all. We have some important announcement. Uh, we have been waiting for the dates of the Teens Worship Night, so please make note of these dates. On the 5th of April, we have the Teens Worship Night and the VBS it's on April 9th to 13th. Please mark your calendars. More details will come. The registrations will be opened for the volunteer registration as well as for kids' registrations. So look forward to those dates. God bless you all. Have a blessed week. The pastors are here to pray for you. If you need prayers, please come to the front or the overflow. You may get prayed. Thank you.